Hi everyone, this is Mr. Chiu again and today I'm going to go through with you a little bit on advanced uh, electric field analysis and then I'm going to show you how Gauss law can be used to simplify the situation a lot. Uh, how beautiful that law is. All right, It's going to shorten it by like to one third or one quarter the length of the derivation. So let's begin from first principle and it's important for us to know how to derive things from first principle in case there are certain difficulties in applying those um, other laws that we learn like Gauss law and in the future we will learn bio Savart laws. So let's take a look at say for example if we have a scenario where we have a line charge positive 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 and uh, it is an infinitely long line charge with a um, that goes to infinity on the left and the right and I'm trying to find the electric field at this point at the distance h above the line charge. So let's establish some things that we will be using so that you're not confused. We define this thing called rho where it is the charge per length. Now you will suspect right, that there is integration because we need to find the field due to a small little point over here. Uh, this small little dq over here and then we have the expression for the electric field due to this charge at this point and then we're going to sum. The word sum comes out means electric field, uh, means integration will be involved. So let's take a look at the, the, the field due to that small little q over there. Do you agree that because it's positive charge, the field will be here? But what is interesting is if you've got a, another corresponding charge on the right side at the same distance away, the field will be in this direction. By now you knowing that electric field is a vector quantity you should be able to see that the electric field in the x direction will cancel off each other because it is symmetrical and opposite to each other. It is equal and opposite to each other. So the only component that will sum up is the EY. And if we call this angle theta over here, this will be theta. So it is the EY which is equals to E cosine theta that will sum up. The E sine theta which is the horizontal component will cancel out each other. So there will be no effect. Okay, so we, if the field due to each charge over here is E and the Y component is E cosine theta, now, can, do you agree with me that we just need to sum up the E cos theta, then we will get the um, electric field due to the whole line charge. Okay, so if you are okay with this, let's move on to elaborate a little bit more. Do you agree that this small little E field, in fact I shouldn't call it E, it should be DE, because it's the field due to this small little charge, is K DQ divided by R square, which is K the charge density times dx, I'm calling this direction x. And the r square is this r, the distance between the charge and the point. So therefore, what we have here is the r square is, if this is x, it will be x square plus h square. Now remember, cosine theta has to be factored in. So if it is cosine theta, it is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is cosine theta. Now if you multiply the two of them, the dEy, which is a small little e field in the y direction, is equals to k rho dx upon times h upon h square plus x square to the power of 3 upon 2 if you multiply these two together. Now this is the point of time where you have to perform integration and uh, if you integrate this from negative infinity to infinity, this one from uh, actually is from 0 to e and the other one is from negative infinity to infinity because it's the x that we're integrating. So now you need to know um, this standard integral which is integral of 1 upon x squared plus a squared to the power of 3 upon 2 dx is actually equals to x a square x square plus a square to the power half um, standard integral that you need to know okay a very useful standard integral because it appears very often this integral over here now in physics Olympic if you take part don't worry too much it will be it should be given to you but for this particular case because it appears so often 
good for you to remember. So as you can see, this is the form. So eventually, if you integrate the left side, the EY effective, I can take out the constants and then this constant as well, integral of negative infinity to infinity dx square root of x square plus h square to the power of 3 upon 2. So this will be k rho h x upon a square x square plus a square uh, to the power of half minus x upon a square x square plus a square negative infinity infinity. Now one of the things that you need to take note of is, uh, I'm going to perform a little bit of math magic here, is that if x goes to infinity, do you agree that a becomes negligible? a in this case is your x, uh, is your h. So probably I replace it with h square. Since I already substituted applied this to this scenario. So can you see that if x goes to infinity, this is going to be negligible. So x square plus h square is approximately x square. Therefore, if I were to make that simplification, it would be xh minus, um, actually I should have substituted this into here already. So x, just to make sure, h square, h square. All right, so if I were to substitute infinity and I can cancel this one away, and if I were to substitute infinity and minus infinity, if this is negative infinity, it will be negative negative to give you positive so it will be k rho h upon h square which is k rho upon h which is equals to in fact 2k rho because this is this minus minus so it becomes plus so there should be a factor of 2 and 2 here and k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught so it will be 2 4 pi epsilon naught h and you can cancel this, giving you, so this is the electric field due to the um, infinite line charge. Can you see it? Okay, good, you can see it. So the thing is, uh, this is deriving the field due to a line charge um, from first principle. I'm going to show to you now how you can derive it using Gauss law. It's going to be very, very simple. So let's take a look. The same scenario, but you can derive it using Gauss law. So if you have a line charge, now remember when you choose a Gaussian surface, E dS equals to Q epsilon. Now Gaussian surface sounds very intimidating, but actually it is a surface where the electric field can be constant. Now looking at the symmetry of this situation, do you agree that at the point h above the line charge and if you rotate 360 the electric field around there should be the same because it's the same distance away so we choose a gaussian surface that looks like this so you need to integrate eds um, across this whole surface and there are three surfaces the curved surface and the two side surfaces so we know that the electric field is going to go out like this there's no electric field in this component. Remember in our derivation, the x component cancels away. So therefore the E dS, we only need to consider the curved surface. And since E is uniform throughout the whole surface, is equals to the charge enclosed by this. If we call this L, it will be charge per unit length times the length of the conductor equals to this. And the surface area of this conductor, the curved surface area of the cylinder, is equal to 2 pi h, which is the circumference, times the length of the conductor. And can you see that if you strike this off, E is equal to how many steps? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. 3 steps, as opposed to what we did just now so many so many so many steps okay now how do you find then the field strength due to a charge plate um, can you see that a charge plate is made up of small little strips of infinite line charge so infinite charge plate is going to be made up of infinite number of infinite line charge stack up along one another so this is going to get really, really uh, complicated. 
uh, you can do it by double double integration using the first principle but i'm going to show you how by using the gauss law you can actually uh, derive the expression for the uh, infinite charge plane so let's take a look Now, because it is an infinite charge plate, we can assume that the electric field is uniform and the field is only pointing in the vertical direction, just like this one. Because of an infinite line charge, the field strength is only in the vertical direction. Okay? And, um, and and the infinite charge plate basically it's line charge stack up on this direction so that's why the x component also cancels off in this direction and in this direction if you stack up the line charge like this okay and um, therefore that we know that the electric field is going to point this way and this point this way if it is positively charged and this area is s so the cylinder, the Gaussian surface is like what we did for the line charge, just that instead of this way, we tilt it this way. So therefore, if we apply E dS equals to Q upon epsilon naught, the charge enclosed is rho times S. Now the rho over here is charge per unit area, rather than charge per unit length, it's charge per unit area times the surface area. And E is the same at this point and at this point. Let's say that this is H, and the area is S. But we need to times 2 because there is this area and this area. Now, if you take a careful look, there's something really interesting over here. Can you see over here that just now when we derive the expression for the electric field due to a charge line, a line charge, it depends on the distance from the line charge. But if you take a look at the electric field strength, uh, from a infinite charge plate it doesn't depend on distance whether you have one centimeter or two kilometers away from the charge plate you have the same electric field this is really counterintuitive just imagine that you're on earth and you are like at Pluto you have the same gravitational field 9.81 due to earth it just doesn't make sense so but of course you need to put it into perspective this is a infinite plate that means it goes infinite in all directions. So if you use the earth example, whether you are one meter away or five meters away, the earth is still infinitely large and therefore it is still the same still field strength. So therefore, I think infinite over here is relative. All right, compared to an end, if the end travels for a day, if it can climb upwards for a day, probably the field is still 9.81 where the end is after a day because the distance compared to the size of the earth is small so earth is still infinite compared to that distance travel all right so this is going to be very useful when you um, use it for capacitors we can use this to derive the expression for capacitors and many other things all right so today just a quick summary what i've shown you is how do you use first principle that the electric field kq upon r square to derive the field due to a line charge infinite line charge now, then I also show you how you can derive the expression for the um, infinite line charge using the Gauss law. Then we extended it to um, the charge plate. I've also shown you how you can do that using double integration for using the first principle on the charge plate. Basically, it's an infinite line charge this way, then you stack up the line charge this way. So it's going to be really, really extensive. Now, over here, you can get it in three steps. So what's the point of using first principle? Of course it has. What if you have not an infinite uh, plate, not an infinite line charge? What if you have a finite line charge? Now, if you have a finite line charge, then the end effects will come into play and the Gauss law doesn't work that well. So if you have a finite line charge, say of length 2L, then the uh, first principle will be very useful because then you'll be able to sum it the expression over here instead of infinity to negative infinity you can go from l minus l to l and uh, for the charge plate which is finite if it is l l l l square plate then the same thing you do it the same way for this for line charge and then you stack up the line charge in the other way to sum up the effects of the various line charges so the the uh, first principles which is this long method over here is still useful especially in fact in most situations where it's not ideal where it's not infinite 
So it has its place. Therefore, that's why I still need to go through this with you. And then um, in the cases where I can simplify, the Gauss law will be really, really nice. It gives us a good estimate. Okay, so I hope that you have a dipstick experience in using the simple equation k cube on r squared in a more complex scenario. And um, I've also shown you with more examples how the Gauss law can be applied. Okay, have fun with physics.